Hey, what's up guys? Joker here and I hope you're all doing well. Today we've got a few news stories to get through in the world of tech and PC gaming. First up, we're going to be talking about Intel's XE graphics cards, which are meant to be launching next year. And if rumors are meant to be believed, then it looks like things are not going so well with the graphics card division over at the blue team. Also, we have got information regarding a possibility where Horizon Zero Dawn, previously a PS4 exclusive, could be coming to the PC as early as February. And last up, we're going to be talking about Halo Reach and mod support as the game came out yesterday. But first, we're going to start things off talking about Intel XE. As you guys know, these are the dedicated GPUs which are meant to be coming to these to servers, as well as gaming graphics cards, which are supposed to be coming out by the summer of 2020. It appears that things might not be going so well over there with Intel. For starters, they all had a couple of previous AMD staffers leave last week, mainly Chris Hook, who's probably the um, most notable one, which people have heard before, who was in charge of PR over at AMD and the Radeon Technologies Group. He joined Intel last year, along with a few other AMD staffers like Raja Kadori. As far as we know right now, Raja Kadori is still with Intel with no plans to leave their graphics division. So things seem to be going okay as far as him. He's concerned. He's probably um, really the most important person that came from AMD over to Intel to actually help design these chips. But having a couple of people that only joined in the last 12 months leaving the company now is not a good sign. And according to a forum member over on Chipel, which is um, responsible for a lot of leaks and rumors that do come to be true, but of course, this, you know, it should be taken with a grain of salt. It's just a forum member over on a Chinese website who are claiming these things. And if these things are true, it definitely looks bad for Intel right now. Some of the key highlights of the things he mentioned over on chiphell.com, which was later reported by WCCF Tech, he says these things. He says that work on the XE GPUs does not seem to be going well. Also, that Ponte Vecchio is unlikely to arrive within the next two years. Currently, the efficiency of the XE architecture is relatively low compared to the competition. And for the time being, there are no plans for custom models of XE graphics cards and that drivers would need a lot of time in order to approve. So there you have it. Things not sounding too good right now for Intel, especially things like Ponte Vecchio, which are their exascale servers, which are codenamed, um, are not meant to be coming anytime soon. Also, we had delays already for the dedicated GPUs from Intel, which Chris Hook had revealed over on Twitter back in March. We were originally expecting these around June 2020. Even so, very recently, uh, Raja had posted a picture of a license plate that showed um, for Intel XE in June 2020 and things like that, which we talked about here on the channel. But we now know that it's not going to be coming until late 2020. So there are a variety of things at play here. Also talking about the efficiency not being anywhere near where the current competition is, obviously referring to AMD and NVIDIA. So all in all, if this is true, uh, things aren't looking so good right now for Intel, which I think is maybe with the fifth or sixth time um, that I've said that right now. But definitely let me, let me know your guys' thoughts uh, down in the comments below on this. I think we all want to see Intel do well in the GPU space as more competition is only going to be better for us, the consumers. So hopefully either these things are not true or Intel can get things ironed out fast so they can actually be competitive in the GPU space at some point next year. Next up, we need to talk about Horizon Zero Dawn, which was a very well-received PS4 exclusive, which released last year. Very good reviews and everything like that. And with all of the PlayStation exclusives now seeming to show up on the PC, one would hope that more of the cat back catalog would start to come to the PC, including first-party titles like Horizon Zero Dawn. And according to a Russian reporter by the name of Logvinov, he uh, has said that it is going to be coming to the PC in February 2020 and that we'll be getting an announcement very soon, possibly at the VGA Rewards, which was hypothesized by DSOG. The source for this story is that would probably make the most sense as to where it would be announced as that's the only major gaming event to round out the end of the year. So that would certainly be exciting to see Horizon Zero Dawn come to the PC. I have personally not played the game, although from what I've seen of it, it actually looks really good and something I would definitely be keen to play if it did come out on the PC. I did very briefly try it 
on my PS4 Pro, but the performance wasn't really up to snuff for me and it just felt kind of laggy, so I couldn't find myself enjoying it unlike some other games that I played, which were playing at a locked 30 frames per second like Spider-Man. Something like that I played absolutely fine. Also Red Dead Redemption 2 I played on the, on the PS4 Pro, and both of those games pretty much ran at a locked 30 frames per second, and I found myself enjoying those titles, but Horizon Zero Dawn just had uh, way too many performance issues for me personally where I saw the frame rate dropping a lot and it didn't feel very responsive, so I didn't put any significant amount of time into it. So I would love to see this game come onto the PC as well as other exclusives like Spider-Man. I would love to see that come to the PC as well. That would be absolutely incredible. And also coming from the same reporter, Logvinov claimed that he knows that a few developers working on games for PlayStation 5 told him that Sony asked them to keep in mind a PC version when developing their games, which would be awesome to see more exclusive obviously come to the PC. I would love to see every game come out into the PC. I think it makes a lot of sense for Sony to make this move as they have already started this previously with some games like Heavy Rain, Detroit Become Human. We know Death Stranding is going to be coming at some point next year in early summer, which is what the reports are saying. And I, like I said, I think it makes a lot of sense. We've already seen Microsoft start to do this. Halo Master Chief Collection just came out on the PC and they're, they've been releasing their exclusives on the PC um, for a couple of years now. Pretty much every new game that comes out has a simultaneous launch for the console as well as the PC, which totally makes sense as Microsoft owns Windows, the platform where we're playing these games anyway. So for Sony, I think it makes a lot of sense to come over to the PC and be able to compete with them on there as well as they've got these games and they're not really gaining anything by limiting it to just their consoles. I don't think there is a significant portion of the PC player base which is going to go out and buy a console just to play some first party exclusives. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. Obviously, I am evidence that there are people out there that are willing to pick up a console specifically just to play first party titles, which is the only reason I bought a PS4 Pro. I didn't buy it to play games that were already on the PC or coming out on the PC at the same time. I bought it to play games that I could otherwise not play at all. So if these were to come out on the PC, it just opens them up to that many more players that could play some of their first party titles as well as titles developed by third party studios, but specifically for Sony. Let me know your thoughts on that down in the comments below as well. If Horizon Zero Dawn does come out in the PC in February of 2020, is that a title that you would pick up? And speaking of exclusives, we just, I just mentioned Halo Reach uh, coming to the PC, which is out available now on the PC. And actually, if you want to give it a try, it's $10 over on Steam for just Halo Reach, but it is $40 for the full Master Chief Collection, but the other titles are obviously not available right now. Those are going to be coming out um, periodically throughout the year 2020, hopefully sooner rather than later. But I found a bit of a loophole if you want to play the game. You can actually play it for a dollar right now if you get the basic Xbox Game Pass subscription service, which has two versions. They have a basic version, which is $5 a month, and then they have a premium version, which is $15 a month, which gives you some other games other than first-party Microsoft titles. But the basic one for $5 gives you all of the Microsoft-specific titles, and they have, for the first month, you can do it for a dollar. So right now you can head over on the Xbox app on the Xbox app on your PC. You could sign up for a dollar and then after the first 30 days it will renew if you don't cancel it for $5 per month. But at least for this first month, you can go ahead and try out Halo Reach for just a buck. So I don't really see much reason to not go ahead and do that if you have not already used a $1 trial period on the Xbox Game Pass when it launched earlier this year. So that was definitely the route I would suggest a lot of people to go if they want to go ahead and try out Halo Reach. I did play a little bit of it yesterday as well as today. The downloads were pretty poor uh, running through the Xbox app. I'm pretty sure they were getting just absolutely hammered uh, on, on the server. So that's probably why it was uh, running. It was downloading at like 500 kilobytes per second at one point, And then it would like ramp up and slow down. It took like almost three hours for me to download it, and it was only 20 gigabytes. It should not have taken anywhere near that long running on my gigabit line. Uh, and so far, it, the PC port of it seems to be pretty good, although I was having some issues with the audio where my gun wasn't making like any sound at all. It was very, very quiet, even though I had all the audio sliders pushed over to the right. And some of the mechanics on the game do feel really dated. I don't really mind the graphics that much, seeing the graphics, you know, not being absolutely amazing by 2019 standards. But some of the mechanics were very dated and I just feel like I could have used some updating in that area to make it a little bit more modern. So, so far I've not really enjoyed what I played of Halo Reach and, and I just, 
I wish they had brought it to the uh, the PC a lot sooner because it's been so long and at this point a lot of the mechanics are dated. But thankfully, the game is going to be getting mod support. It can actually technically support mods right now is when you launch the game there's actually two versions of the game they've got the main version of it and then they have a version which will disable the anti-cheat and with the anti-cheat disabled it completely allows you to mod the single player portion of the game or custom matches for multiplayer so this should not affect anyone that just wants to play the vanilla multiplayer experience if you just want to queue up and search for matches it should not affect you at all but if you want to do custom matches you'll be able to do mods for that which is going to be really cool and also single player mods which should also be pretty freaking sweet to see as i would love to see what the modding community can do with halo reach on the pc and hopefully before long we'll start seeing some of these mods showing up as the game has only been out for less than 24 hours at the time we were recording this we've not seen any mods become available yet at least that i could find in a quick google search around the interwebs but hopefully soon we will start seeing some mods show up and that's going to be pretty darn killer. But let me know in the comments, what do you think so far about Halo Reach if you played it on the PC? And as I said, if you have not already used a $1 a month trial for the Xbox Game Pass, I think it's worth at least giving the game a shot if you haven't played Halo Reach before. You could at least beat the, you could probably beat the campaign in less than a month pretty easily if you go ahead and do that if you're only interested in playing through the story on Halo Reach and that can give you an idea whether or not you want to pick up the rest of the Master Chief Collection which we'll be seeing in the year 2020. But I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here guys. As always I look forward to your feedback, thoughts, opinions and everything down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new don't forget to leave a thumbs up on it, subscribe if you're not already and if you've been here for a while ring that notification bell that way you never miss a video as soon as it goes up live on the channel and I'll see you tomorrow for another video.